Hi everyone, Connor McDonald with another Ask Tom TV episode for you. We had a question on reference partitioning in terms of how to load large volumes of data quickly. Well, we had an Ask Tom office hours session the other day and we answered that question with some real demos during the webinar. So I've grabbed that piece out of the video and presented it to you here. Enjoy. So here I have a table called PAR, PAR for parent. It's got an ID, a description, and I'm partitioning it into monthly chunks based on the created date column and I'm starting at 2015. So that's just a normal partition table. I'm using interval partitions here such that the database will automatically create partitions for me um, as opposed to me having to create them in advance. I'm gonna create a child table as well. And this is the conventional means by which we create reference partitions. So the child table has a primary key, the parent has a primary key. So there's the parent primary key, which lets me now create a foreign key constraint on the child table referencing that parent table. And as a result, I can now partition by reference. So let's now see how it goes in terms of populating these tables. So first I'm gonna insert about, I think I'm inserting about five million rows into my parent table. And here's the challenge. The parent table has a primary key index on it already such that I could create the child reference partition table. So inserting those rows is going to be quite costly because it takes a while not just to insert the row data, but also to keep the table data updated as well. It took about 25 seconds. Now I'm doing the same thing on my child table, and it's gonna have the same effectively impact. I've got a primary key index on the child, and I've got a foreign key constraint referring back to the parent table. Even though I'm doing a direct mode insert using insert append, there's a high cost in actually doing this insert. And once again, it's taking, what it took 35 seconds. So the question was, how can we improve on that? I have to define all those constraints for reference partitioning. How can I avoid it? I thought I'd give you a few clues. Here's the first option. One is I can create my parent table with no primary key. So now I can just insert into there and there's no indexes or anything on this primary key. What I'm doing is deferring the creation of my child table until I've populated the primary key, the parent table first. So inserting into a parent table with no indexes, you can see is a lot faster. And then I can add the index as a secondary step. That's still, that took about 17 seconds, which is still a fair bit faster than the initial load. Adding an index after load is generally gonna be faster. My child table, I can defer the primary key, but obviously I can't defer the foreign key. I can't not create that, because otherwise I won't be able to do partition by reference. So I can try to populate that, um, I've got some benefit here because I haven't put the primary key on yet for the child table, but I still have to have that foreign key relationship in order to have reference partitioning. But so I've managed to remove one overhead, and so we'll see how it goes in terms of inserting the five million rows. And that was down from 35 seconds to about 22 seconds, and then they add the primary key. So I've gained some time there as well. So that's another way, and this is a sort of a generic way we use with any kind of data loads is try to defer any kind of index maintenance you have until after the fact. So even with reference partition tables, you can do that with the various indexes that aren't associated with the particular foreign key constraint. You can actually go probably even one step better. To go to the next level up, you actually might have to go a little bit more complexity. So the parent table is being reloaded here in the same way as before. There's no indexes on it. And I'm gonna insert the five million rows and then add the primary key as a secondary step. So that's no different to the previous demo we just ran. Simply load the rows, then add the primary key. Here's where things are a bit different. I'm gonna create my child reference partition table, but rather than now go ahead and load the five million rows into it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert one row per partition. So I've only inserted 20 rows there, and then I've rolled them back anyway. What that's going and doing is, is automatically creating the 20 interval partitions in my child table in preparation for load. So I've pre-created the partitions, but actually put no data into it. Now I'm gonna create a standalone table called child subset. It's a table which I'm going to load into chunks of data rather than loading my entire child table. This looks a bit more complicated. What I'm gonna do now is loop through each of my child table partitions, which is this query here. And then rather than load the child table directly, which has that instant immediate and or always on foreign key constraint, I'm gonna load it into my child subset table, which is a standalone table. Obviously to do so, I need to know the exact definition and that distribution of keys across the partitions, but this is, as again, generally used for a once-off load. So then what I can do is I'll 
load the child subject table. And now as an after effect, I can get to, I can load that without having the foreign key on because it's not associated with the parent table yet. So now I'll add the foreign key and then I'll exchange it into my child table. And that way I can bypass the validation of the foreign key. Um, in fact, if I scroll across, we can actually see I'm choosing without validation. Obviously, I need to have some confidence here that the data is loading I am, is valid. Then I'll drop the constraint, truncate the table, and loop around and do the next partition. So in this way, I'm actually loading the data, doing the validation, and then swapping it into the child table on a partition by partition basis. So we'll give that a run. And in this way, I haven't had to do a big insert of data into that child table with the foreign key enabled. But you can see there we churn through it, we got through it in 17 seconds, and then we go at the primary key as a final step again. As you can see, there's many ways in which you can load the reference partition tables. If they're small volumes, just do it the easy way. Create the tables, load the data, and you're off and running. If the volumes are larger, then maybe consider dropping the indexes first, add them as an additional step afterwards. But if you've got massive volumes to load, look at the exchange partition technique I spoke about to really get those volumes flying through fast. Whichever way you choose, reference partitioning, a great feature from Oracle 11 onwards. See you next time on Ask Tom TV.